All right, um, we'll start. Sorry for the delay. The main reason being that this work was mostly done by my student and he couldn't get a visa for the US, so he's not here. We did record a video. Um, we also had a longer version of this whole thing yesterday on main stage. Um, so you can still find this at some point online if you're interested in all of the details. However, since the audio is not working um, for the video, you will have to do with me. So uh, I'm, I can't provide you with all the technical details, but I should be able to, to get you through it. And if you have any specific um, questions on um, yeah, attacks and, and the toolkit we built and everything, uh, I can direct you to my students. So yeah, let's start. It's, it's fine, we'll get to it. Um, who are we? So f first, is, that's my student, um, Vladislav, also known as ESO. He's a bug bounty hunter. Uh, he did his uh, master in cybersecurity at ETH Zurich, where he came to us and asked, hey, what could we, what cool systems could we hack? What do you have for us uh, in ideas for a master thesis? Uh, he said, okay, here my background is all sorts of bug bounty stuff. Uh, I has super cool skills, really the wizard behind all this stuff, and he's looking for a new opportunity. So if you're convinced by the stuff he built, contact him. Who are we? Who am I? Um, my name is Martin. I'm a security researcher and a scientist at the Swiss Cyber Defense Campus. Uh, the Cyber Defense Campus is the procurement arm or part of the procurement arm of the Swiss uh, Department of Defense. I've done a lot of systems work, um, hacking hack mostly transportation systems, uh, aviation. You find a lot of stuff from us in the aerospace village here. Um, I've done space, cars, trains, everything basically. I've never looked at Bluetooth before, neither had uh, Vlad, but I've done some stuff in cars. For example, hacking um, electric charging systems. So you can find that under brokenwire.fail. Um, so what's the motivation for this research? Why are we doing this? Well, if you're in the procurement arm of uh, federal government, you buy a lot of stuff. Uh, broadly, you can break this up in the pre-tender stage and in the actual tender where you buy stuff and a post-tender stage. And uh, basically, when you do security testing, pen testing only after you buy stuff, it's generally too late. Like there you have these systems, you have deployed them, they're insecure, that, that's very late. So we might still do this and we have a lot of systems where we don't have uh, these um, processes in place, all the systems, but in general we try to be as early as possible. Um, the idea obviously buys a lot of IT systems, but also other systems such as cars, which we will get into. And uh, because we buy a lot of things, we have a decent negotiation leverage with the manufacturers. I mean, they want to sell us stuff, so they should follow some requirements that we put in tenders. Um, one other thing we also do is do vulnerability research on standards, on systems. We've done this a lot in aviation and in space. But the problem is, if your systems have very long life cycles, even if you can demonstrate flaws in protocols and standards and show that it's unsafe, unsecure, until something is changed and deployed in the long run, it will take up to decades. So that doesn't help us even in our procurement system because there are, everyone is using the same standards and we don't have the alternatives. This brings me to today's concrete case study. Um, vehicles and the army and Bluetooth. So we apparently all already heard some Bluetooth insecurities in the previous talk, which is nice. Um, but we are not talking about Bluetooth low energy, we're only talking about standard classic Bluetooth. As alluded, DoD buys a lot of stuff. That's probably the first thing you think of uh, when you think of Department of Defense. Luckily, these don't have Bluetooth, uh, as far as I know, most at least the ones I've looked at, uh, but probably that, that comes uh, very soon. Boringly, however, we buy mostly box standard, run-of-the-mill cars, a lot of them. And these all have Bluetooth. Uh, you can't really buy a modern car without it, even if you want it. Even if you put that in a tender, uh, you basically nobody would uh, sell you a car or offer you 
to sell the car without Bluetooth. That brings me to the scope of the present research. Cars are fairly complex systems, so Bluetooth is not the only interface. Uh, we counted at least 19 interfaces in, in those cars, from wired ODB ports um, to the key fob. If there's an issue with any of them, traditionally the only way for the manufacturer to do anything is to do a recall. That's very expensive and pretty much only done for really safety, big safety problems. Um, for security, that rarely happens and that leaves us with a very complex attack surface that is rarely patched when a car has been shipped and is out there. Um, however, despite this, and despite Bluetooth being known and secure, this hasn't been really addressed on any larger scale. Uh, there have been a couple of papers looking at maybe one single exploit and one single car, but nobody has looked at the whole breadth of Bluetooth exploits that exist out there in different cars and from different manufacturers. And that was the gap that we saw here because there's an estimated more than one billion cars with Bluetooth, um, Bluetooth Classic. Pretty much all of new cars um, have Bluetooth and it's certainly an insecurity that we wanted to examine uh, because no one has done it at scale. So that brings me to the standard um, Bluetooth technology stack. Bluetooth, as you will be aware, is a wireless communication standard. It has a very complex tech stack because you have a lot of shared responsibility. And of course, uh, it has to fulfill a lot of different um, use cases. And that makes it very, very complex. To fulfill these different use cases, Bluetooth has a lot of different profiles. I'm not going through all of them in the interest of time here, but you can choose different pro profiles, for example, to make calls, um, of course, to, to listen to music, but also some profiles can have full access to your SIM card in the car or extract messages. Um, that's how you can, in your, in your car, in your car system, communicate hands-free using your phone. The security models, you basically have these four options um, to pair to or a Bluetooth system with another one, our case a car. Um, depends on the capabilities of the thing you want to pair. You have uh, display yes, no. You have something that only has a display but no input. You have something that has a keyboard but no display. And you have even something like headphones that has no input or no output whatsoever. And these all need to be somehow connected um, with different means. So that's the Bluetooth security model. Um, it's very binary. Either you're connected or you're not. And if you're connected, then you have access, basically. We have classic legacy pairing. Um, there's basically no security in this. Uh, we have just works with yeah, enables quite easy man in the middle attacks. Um, we have passkey entry, which is a bit more secure, but there have been method confusion attacks uh, shown against this recently. And the only known secure option at the moment is uh, numeric comparison. There's prior art, of course, um, so we went through at the beginning, so to check how many Bluetooth vulnerabilities, exploits, and attacks are around. So this is, uh, we found more than 108 uh, in March, and as of 2022, um, we found almost 650 CVEs just related to Bluetooth devices. The categories we've been looking at um, are critical exploits, so remote code execution, a memory leakage, um, man in the middle, denial of service, or chaining attacks, which are not vulnerabilities in and by itself, um, but they can lead to um, further exploitation um, if the environment is right. So the goal for our procurement was to build a Bluetooth, uh, Bluetooth test kit for basically all the security and vulnerabilities on the market um, because that didn't exist at the moment and it was 
very difficult to build because there's no database of these. You will have academic papers, you will have talks at DEF CON elsewhere, you will have some code released on GitHub, you will have some people who have no code released, you have code that's um, developed on obsolete platforms where you can't get the hardware anymore or have to update software. All of these things um, are big problems and a lot of work to put this into one toolkit. Um, on the, so that's the general problem. On the testing, well, Bluetooth testing has some uh, black box issues, of course. Uh, yeah, kind of false positives, false negatives. And automation, at least of the denial of service stuff, can be quite difficult because if you basically crash the uh, entertainment system of your car um, or the Bluetooth system of your car, and you want to restart the whole thing, we found some cars where you have to get out of the car, lock the car, and not just and walk away, walk away for 20 minutes, because only then the car actually shuts off and restarts. And at that point, yeah, it's quite extensive the uh, time that you need, obviously, to test several vulnerabilities. Um, no matter, we built this toolkit. Um, it exists. It has been online on GitHub for a few months now. Uh, link is here. Will also be on the on the last slide. Goals were collecting all these exploits that we can find and reproduce. Uh, Forty-four and all in all, uh, we tried to automate it as much as possible. But yeah, we have some completely automated stuff, some semi-automated, and some where you have to do something manual. That's just the general architecture. So we have some YAML files. Uh, if you have new exploits, it's modular. You can add these files to the, to the toolkit. And uh, from there, you need a basic uh, setup that I will show. And can go to the car, connect to it, and see which of the vulnerabilities are present. So. After building the toolkit, the second part was really, let's check a lot of cards, as many as we can find. Uh, we, we set up the toolkit, as, as you see here, with just any Ubuntu-based box and a laptop or VM, uh, need some cables. For the full toolkit to be useful, you will need, uh, for example, not only, but uh, also a Nexus 5 phone, fairly old phone, is cheap, but maybe not so trivial to get it on the market, um, because there some other researchers have built uh, frameworks where you can really control the, the Bluetooth stack in detail, and uh, you can also get the ESP Rower kit. If you don't have one of them, you can't test everything, but at least um, partly you can do it. Overall, we found that uh, with all the problems, we, it takes us one to three hours per car. You need to start the engine um, to do most of the tests, which can also be a problem if you're testing in garage and somewhere underground, right? You don't want to run the engine for three hours. Uh, that would not be safe. Easier to test for electric cars. That's uh, definitely a bonus. How did we procure cars? Uh, you see the different manufacturers here. That was our job. As I said, we have a lot of different cars, manufacturers. So uh, we took all our own cars, uh, brought us our army logistics, us took some of our own cars as researchers, uh, as our friends. Overall, 22 different cars, uh, most of them fully tested, four only partially because we had them at the beginning of our research and there were more exploits coming on later. Price range, everything from very cheap to fairly upmarket. And uh, the manufacturers, or the Bluetooth systems at least, covering our estimate roughly 60% of the global market by sales. Roughly 12 out of 15 of the top manufacturers selling cars last year. The tests are non-invasive. It's just connecting Bluetooth, basically. So. Let's get to the results. Um, overall, it took us 40-ish yeah, hours. Um, we found 73 vulnerabilities in these cars. So remember, most of these exploits are known, but they're still all 
present in these cars. Uh, not everything can be solved, so we reported everything that uh, was relevant and could be solved to the manufacturers and uh, reported them responsibly. This shows part of the reason, right? Um, cars lack very much in adoption of standards. There's never the newest Bluetooth version. We found that it takes roughly, or the median age of a Bluetooth version in a car is seven years behind um, the actual release Bluetooth standard. Full results of our car test, they're also on the GitHub. Um, you see different range, like, you know, you'd think very new cars should have no to fewer vulnerabilities. That was true for these two. Not true for many others uh, that were also fairly new from 2022, 2023. We found a lot of uh, vulnerabilities, even critical ones in those. Um, there's just another look at this, right? Uh, average number of vulnerabilities per car, per manufacturer, different uh, ones here. Can focus on critical vulnerabilities. We found them, well, as you can see here, in the mostly Renault, Opel, and, and Volkswagen. A few ones, denial of service vulnerabilities, prevalent in several manufacturers, but uh, so we don't have a lot of time, you can look up the details for that on, on the GitHub. We did found uh, two novel exploits or novel attacks during our research. Um, the details on that are really extensively covered in uh, the main stage talk yesterday. Still uh, briefly going over it, there's one way you can connect to cars and extract the contacts. So if you have a shared threat model, right? Uh, you rent a car or have one of these uh, uh, car sharing uh, systems that happen, uh, exist in many countries, right? You just rent a car for a couple hours. Somebody connected their Bluetooth phone to that. Um, the contacts will be saved. Later on, you can go there and uh, extract the contacts that were on the car. So we can see it here on the left. Um, should say no contacts available if you connect with your phone uh, but if you run this new vulnerability this new exploit then you can as you see on the right actually extract the contacts that we had on our phone before um, the second one is another way to establish a man in the middle position even with a system that have numeric comparison and I'll get to what that can do for you. Here's just uh, the proof of concept that it worked with uh, four different cars, and Hyundai, Renault, Audi, and BMW. It's a so relatively widespread issue. What can we do with these things, right? Uh, if you wonder, man in the middle on Bluetooth and denial of service, how is that a problem? Why do we care? As you said, cars are very complex systems, so one thing is we can obviously do some lateral movement, we can get, get in through Bluetooth and get into uh, other systems of the car. Uh, we can, as I said, establish man in the middle positions. And then that's something we discussed extensively yesterday. We can really um, get your two-factor tokens if they're sent by SMS uh, or, uh, yeah, get these tokens and then obviously uh, exploit whatever account two-factor uh, you have set up. So that's quite workable. We've reported this also to the um, phone manufacturers, so Apple and Google. There were some difference in opinions whether this is a big problem or not. Um, Google did patch it, Apple did not patch it. Um, you can basically build your own opinion on this. Brings me to takeaways. Um, I hope you realize much of Bluetooth is fundamentally insecure. This has been well known. There are so many exploits for this. This is both in the standards, in the protocol, and in the implementations. Even the newer cars, new um, systems are shipped with protocol level Bluetooth vulnerabilities. We can't really fix this easily. You need to securely pair, um, but even that doesn't help because the repairing of the system might also be malicious. Uh, and 
we built this toolkit. So if you want to know what your own car, how vulnerable that is on the Bluetooth level, please use that. Um, if you're a car manufacturer, car part manufacturer, please also use it. Check your security posture with regards to Bluetooth. Any questions, uh, look at the, at the GitHub and come to me afterwards. But also please uh, contact Vlad, who did really most of the technical work here. Thank you. Thank you.